All right, you guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is definitely a little bit of a JDM afternoon here. Uh, we're at Patrick Tim Wu's house, okay? Uh, if you guys don't know, if you haven't watched the video, bringing in my new car from Japan, Patrick was uh, really essential in that process and bringing the car over. And as you can see, we have a whole host of vehicles that we're gonna show you guys today. And then after that, uh, we have a bone stock Nissan Stagia 260 RS. That's a Series 2 car, uh, roughly only 700 of the Series 2 cars were ever made. Uh, so we're gonna take that on the road and go see what it's like. But we'll take a look at the Laurel over here. Uh, we just filmed the Laurel a few weeks ago. We did an R34 GTT versus Laurel video. Um, so you guys have seen this car before. I don't really need to go into too much detail, I don't think. RB25 DET under the hood. Um, Patrick's done the basic uh, turbo internal mods. And then, and then on the right here, we have three Nissan Stagias. We filmed this one a couple years ago. This is Navik's car, I believe. Uh, and that has the OEM R34 GTR wheels on it. Uh, if you look over here. Um, and then you've got the full R34 GTR front end conversion. <laughs> and then of course, you can see aftermarket uh, wing mirrors on here and the RB26 under the hood. Then we have this Stagia. I don't believe we filmed this one. It's the whole pedestrian model you can get out of that. Oh, okay, perfect. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. Hello, Patrick. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. You're packing some heat here, Patrick. Yeah, I don't think yeah. the viewers are ready for what's under the hood. Yeah, you wanna see it? You wanna see it? <laughs> yeah, check it out. <gasps> yes. Uh, it's one of the special ones I found at the auctions. Uh, it just happens to have a 2J in it. Uh, unfortunately, not a very well done swap, but uh, yeah, it's a project. So what's we'll not what's later. not well done about it? Well, the turbo controls are not there. Oh, okay. And then the transmission is actually an uh, Tesla J160. Okay. So that's not gonna hold it if I uh, get full power out of this thing. Uh, that's the first thing's gonna go. Okay. So okay. So that's uh, something to look for. Yeah, I'm all about those engine swaps. Here. You know about the Corolla like engine swaps. The engine swaps here. Uh, everything swap everything. But that's, that's the thing. thing. You swap something logical into it. That's what you always do. Yeah. Um, which brings us to the 86. Should we go quickly check out the 86? Yeah, check it out. So we filmed uh, Patrick's 8086 a few years ago. The real, the real star of the show. If Patrick's garage is proof of anything, now I didn't realize Patrick did like all the work here, but you don't need a lot of space, you guys. Look, Patrick's built like the sickest 86 in the lower mainland uh, in, in this one car garage. AP1 S2000 engine? F20C, yeah, uh, driven by cable. The best way you do it, you know, standard cable goes there, and you don't have electronic throttle or anything, or traction control. Um, it's, it's a great swap, because back then, this was an SL5, so, a 4AG uh, with like mods and stuff well, it will cost you around the same and you'll be nowhere near 200 horsepower. <laughs> but this is like out of the box, 250, why not? So this has been on the track for the last 15 years. Every year at least it attended track day. So it's nice. never really had any issues that wasn't caused by me. So the engine itself is, will take a beating, no, no problem. So. Patrick has a bunch of rare JDM cars. He's always importing cars and he has brought out, so kindly for us, uh, because the insurance is running up in a day or two here, he has brought out this ultra rare 1999 Nissan Stagia 260RS. So the 260RS is a very interesting specimen in Nissan's 90s lineup. It has the RB26 DETT under the hood. A lot of you guys know that obviously, but if you don't know, yeah, this is the R33 GTR RB26 pulled straight out of that and stuffed into this Stagia wagon here. And there's there's no difference. It's the exact same engine. You are getting a GTR powertrain when you buy a Stagia 260 RS. 8,000 RPM. Oh, sweet, sweet Godzilla. <laughs> so smooth. 
So the 260 RS is an extremely rare car, and this is why I say it might take a little bit more to get your hands on one of these, and also why it might be totally worth it in the end. And you might find that this is like one of the one of the greatest driving 90s cars, period, uh, to come out of Japan. But they only made, in total, between Series 1 and Series 2 of the 260RS, 1,734 of these worldwide. Now, of course, these only came in right-hand drive. They only came factory manual, um, and they were only sold in Japan, I believe. I don't even think they were actually sold overseas in the European and Australian and New Zealand markets. I, I don't think so. Correct me if I'm wrong, please, in the comments. But the fact is, and this is a Series 2 right here, so this is a, I believe Patrick said it's a 99, so it's a Series 2, um, which means it's even more rare. So the Series 1, they made roughly 1,000, and then for the Series 2, about 700 of these exist. Uh, it's, it's the full JDM experience. This is one of the, like, from the outside, the stage is what I would kind of classify as like a, a tier two JDM uh, sports car or a stage two JDM sports car just because um, it's not the FDRX7, it's not the R34 Skyline, it's the Mark IV Supra, that, those kind of cars. You see what I'm saying? But that being said, uh, from that's from the outside. <laughs> Once you drive it and when you really look at it, you'll find that the 260RS does in fact deserve every bit of respect that the Skyline GTRs actually receive from the automotive community at large. You, you basically, I mean, the turbos spool up like real soon, like 2,500, 3,000 RPM. And unlike a lot of the other Stagia models, like the RS4S, which was the only other Stagia offered in factory manual. And in fact, that and the 260RS, this one right here, were only offered with the manual. But some of those lower tier versions like the RS4S um, do have, they don't have the RB26, but they do still have the RB25 DET, um, but that doesn't rev quite as high. So it revs, you know, anywhere between seven and 7,500 RPM. In fact, it's really cool on the interior here. Just like the R34 GTT, you get a few OEM gauges here, giving you some crucial information. Uh, you've got your boost on the right here. Now, these gauges are a little smaller than on the R34, but you also have a gauge on the very left there, which gives you uh, your amount of torque being sent to the front wheels through that front differential. Um, so that all-wheel drive system works very well. It is rear bias until it needs torque sent to the front. So, And that's what makes the 260RS so special uh, and so different than any modern wagon that you can buy today. And you'd be surprised driving a almost 25 year old car here. There's just such a nice direct connection between the throttle and the engine. Um, and the car just feels so well put together even 20 plus years later. Nissan's goal from the get go in this car was to team up with Autech, a Japanese a subsidiary uh, of Nissan that was basically born in the late 80s to create with Nissan an entire lineup of cars that were catered to the sports luxury kind of corner of the market. They were combining the luxurious tendencies of a Stagia with the ultimate power and ultimate fierce kind of driving experience that the Godzilla um, RB26 GTRs all carry under the hood and in the feel of how they actually drive on the road. So that was the goal. And that's why a lot of these cars like this and uh, another notable Autech collaboration, which was the S15 Autech version, which happened to be the highest horsepower naturally aspirated S15 to come off the production line. Uh, but they were all very low production because Autech wasn't, it's not like a big tuner. It's a subsidiary of Nissan. It's not like integrated into the, uh, the just essential production line when they're building, you know, basic Skyline, four-door NA auto Skylines and all that BS. Autech was like its own thing. So these really do, it's, it's not just a, a rare car like a lot of manufacturers do nowadays, especially in the supercar world of a rare car just to be, just for the sake of being rare, just for the sake of um, bumping up that uh, that marketplace, that collector's market, which then in turn kind of boosts brand recognizability um, among the enthusiasts and the collectors. But Nissan and Autech did this 
genuinely real written. You could feel it through the car really just for the driving experience and to make an ultimate mashup of ultimate luxury uh, and driving experience. Six. Woo! Yeah, it's the steering. It, the steering is laser precise on these cars. Laser precise. Don't let the looks deceive you. <laughs> Definitely some good boost noises. And Patrick hasn't done anything to this. Patrick, all his cars are turnkey. They all drive, they're all on the road most of the time. And Patrick is one of those guys that appreciates variety. And variety is in fact the spice of life, especially in the JDM world. And just because the GTR and this have the same engine do, does not mean that they're the exact same driving experience. And there's enough difference here that you could definitely have like a GTR as a, as a crazy build, like a big single turbo build, and then keep this factory twins and just kind of just use it and just appreciate it for uh, the piece of uh, Japanese history that it is. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit me up on Instagram at Roads Untraveled. You can kind of see what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and maybe some of the stuff that we don't uh, put on the main channel. Uh, and other than that, yeah, we'll be back with a few other big videos. We're actually going very soon to go check out a, a huge Fast and Furious replica car collection. So look out for that. I know a lot of you guys are going to enjoy those videos. So until that, see you next time.